work with this group in the spring. You've added some new pieces. Start with the older guys, though. Um, what do you see out of those, what, five, six guys, older guys that you have? Um, yeah, the, uh, the older guys we've had in the room so far this year, uh, Bryce, Sam, um, with the new guys, Cortez, Jeremiah, they're learning. Um, obviously, Bryce, Sam, we're here in the spring. They've gotten a lot better just – Detail, understand the playbook. Now that it's, it's being installed for the second, probably even third time with summer workouts. Um, they're really starting to understand the in and outs. They're getting better at their technique. And just, just building upon what we built in the spring. You know, of course, there's always that, that period where you're trying to get to know each other, that in, trying to get to know what works for them, what, what I like, what they like, and, and kind of find the best working relationship. And I think now we've kind of grown a, a relationship and a bond where those guys trust me and they're believing what I'm coaching. And um, I'm seeing leaps and bounds. We just got to keep it going. I know Neil talks a lot about repeating performances. Mm -hmm. Who are your best repeaters right now? Um, if I had to say day in, day out, um, Sam James is just a guy who I would really say, when you talk about repeat performances, coming in every day and playing fast, making plays, he always seems to you know, pop up on the film. You, know, you, you go out there and you know you had a good day, and then you watch the film and you realize that right now he's kind of playing at a different speed than he even was in the spring. And so it's been really good to see I think when guys are confident and they know what to do, that's when they play their fastest. And um, right now he's, he's confident, he knows what he's doing, and it's, it's allowing him to play at, at a different speed. Um, when Caden Prather, um, like we talk about repeat performances, he's got a lot of peak performances, and now the big thing with him is, is stacking them on top of each other. You know, when, when he's playing and when he's confident, he's, he's as good as anybody we have in that room. And so for him, that's been the word every day is just stacking them up, repeat performances, like you say. Bryce, where's his ceiling? What, 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 how has he improved? Um, the biggest thing I think that Bryce has improved on is just, um, just his mental toughness and being, and being a leader. I think he's really kind of stepped up in that void. Um, when I got here, I don't really feel like um, anybody stood up and was really trying to be a leader, really trying to get guys in line. And um, just through the summer and the spring, I've really seen him kind of fill that void. Um, you know, he, he gets guys around to catch jugs. You know, we're in the meeting room. He brings guys for extra meetings, just pushing guys to get extra work. Stuff that I didn't necessarily see him do in the spring, I'm seeing him do now, and I think he's understanding where he's at. Um, so from that aspect, it's been big. And I think just from a conditioning standpoint, he hasn't put on like a ton of weight or lost a ton of weight, but he can go out there and play a lot more snaps at full speed than he could in the spring. And so I think that's big for him just because now he's probably in the best shape that I've seen him in at least. And He's playing fast. He's able to play longer stretches. He's getting less tired, and so that allows him to make more plays. Junior college guys, Bram and Aaron, where, where is their development at right now? Cortez is, uh, is doing really well. Uh, Cortez has great hands. I think um, he's got some of the better hands in the room. He's, he's shown really strong hands. He's a, he's a fairly good route runner. He has some savvy. Um, obviously, there's some things going from, from Juco uh, to this level that he's got to work on and develop on, but he's been really, really teachable really teachable. He's, um, he's picking up everything. He tries not to make mistakes twice. He asks a lot of good questions. So I think he's ahead of the curve. Jeremiah is doing well. Jeremiah has a special skill set that I think is going to allow him to, to do some things. Um, he, he has a different kind of quickness, um, different kind of burst um, that you don't see a lot of guys with, and that's kind of his specialty. So I could see him definitely um, doing some things this, uh, this fall. The biggest thing with Jeremiah is just continuing to learn the playbook and learning multiple positions. Because for him, you know, you have kind of KP, you kind of have Bryce, you kind of have Sam or all those guys. And it's kind of where, where is everybody else going to fit in the rotation and where do you play them at and what's going to be their role. And so uh, just trying to do that every day. So you He's, give a little bit of an example of a couple of those things that JUCO players sometimes have to unlearn and then relearn when they get to D1? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's something you have to learn or unlearn. I think it's just – it's just another level. Like it's just like anything else coming from high school to the college level. It's a it's a it's more athletes. You know, at the JUCO level, you know, Cortez, Jeremiah were probably the two best best athletes on their team. And now coming here, you know, they're not gonna necessarily be the best athlete every time they line up. So it's having that technique and, and doing the little things right every single time. But those guys, the one thing I will say about them, they get extra work, they get extra meetings, they really wanna learn, they ask questions, and so that's been really good to see. Some of those things like breaking contact, some of the drills you see, you know. Um, just, you know, just some of the, maybe some of the detail-oriented stuff, being more physical at the top of routes, um, you know, knowing that, hey, if I got a 14-yard curl, it's got to be at 14. It can't be at 12. It can't be at 17. Like, it's got to be really precise because that quarterback, especially with a, 
you know, how our quarterbacks are playing right now, you want to be on time and, and they're, they're being very accurate putting the ball on us. And so we want to make sure that we're where we need to be when they expect us to be there. You're talking about making big plays. Mm -hmm. What makes a big play receiver? What, uh, what, what separates one from another? And I mean, obviously speed is important, but I have a hunch there's more than that. Um, you know, to me, the biggest thing is just if, if you want to be a consistent receiver and a big play receiver, you have to be able to go out there and repeatedly play at 100 miles an hour. Um, you know, if you can make every route look the same, that's what I tell these guys, make every route look the same. If I can make a curl, a go, a post, a comeback route, all these routes look the same, the DB's got to play me honest. And when he's guessing, I have the advantage because I know where I'm going. You know, there are little tails receivers can give, whether it's raising up your pad level, you know, whether it's hands getting out to the side, whether it's slowing up. It's different things that, you know, if a DB gets enough reps, you know, a guy like Charles Woods, you know, one of the better DBs on our team, you know, he watched you run the same route 10, 12 times in a camp. He's going to know, he's going to know your tails. And so it's, it's really getting those guys to understand that I got to stay low. My pot, pot, pad level has to be low. I really have to drive coming off the ball. I have to be a magician, all right? I got to make everything look the same, be an illusionist. I have to get that guy to play even. And when he's playing even, now you're starting to guess. He may sit on something, and now that's when I get the big plays. You know, obviously, if you're fast, you're fast. But when you're not fast, it's going to be technique that's going to get you that separation that you need. Get back to Aaron. Um, body type-wise, he almost looks like a running back out there. His legs, he's got, you know, thick legs. Mm -hmm. um, does he have the ability to – to break tackles when he's in space. I mean, I know he's got the quickness. Yeah, what do you I, see there? I think um, I think he's a guy that can help us in the return game. You know, I'm not coaching returners, so I don't know who's going to be out there day one. But he's a guy that's, that's shown us has some ability in the return game. He does some good things with the ball in his hand. I think he's he's definitely at his best. You know, catch the ball now. He's in run situations, run out the catch situation. That's when he's at his best. He's just really natural in space and with the ball in his hands and those movement skills. And now for him, it's just about taking all that ability that he has and, and being able to control it, right? Like going out there and running like, okay, you're fast, you're quick, but sometimes you get, you know, out of out of your framework, you get sloppy with certain techniques. If you stay tight, keep everything in the framework, you already have, you know, the speed and the quickness and the agility to get open. So has he been retaining a lot of the things that uh, you've been throwing at him or is it still kinda coming to him pretty fast? I think he's been doing a good job. You know, he ha he's been here since the summer. He's learning. This is really his first time. He knows the playbook. He knows what to do. But now there's a defense out there. It's the adjustments. You know, like, okay, this coverage, I got to do this. This coverage, I have to see this. I think, um, you know, our defense uh, does a great job of just disguising things. And so I think, you know, just, just watching film, I think one of our de our defense is probably one of the more complex defense in the conference. And so I think if he can get all the looks, get all the adjustments, get all the conversions against our guys through the week, he should be fine on Saturday. Yeah, that's I got outside guy or both. I think it's going to be a combo. I think he's going to be both. I think he has the, the, the speed and quickness to win at the line for outside. I think he's naturally an inside guy, but I think he's going to play a decent amount of outside for us too just because of, of the depth and, and things he can do on the outside. How many of those guys you got? I don't, I don't know if you project your profile these things as much, but like, if you look at Bryce and Caden as outside guys, mm -hmm. you look at Jeremiah, they're not the same, right? But yeah. like, there's something apart from a tape measure that can make an outside receiver. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think, you know, like Bryce, KP, obviously they play outside guys. They're taller, they're bigger, they're that prototype, what you want on the outside. But I think both of those guys have the ability to move around. You know, I think the good part about Graham's offense is they're, they're going to be slot receivers taking shots. You know, it's not like offense where, where the outside guys are running goals and, and all the slot guys are doing underneath stuff. We'll take shots with the slots. We'll take shots with outside guys, run underneath stuff with the outside guys, you know, run underneath stuff with the inside. So really, it comes down to who, 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 how can we put these guys in position to be at their best? Like, if, if a guy runs a route better than the rest of them, you know, maybe he needs to be in the slot and run that route, even though he's an outside guy. If a guy's a slot, but he's really good at a certain route, we might put him outside to run it. It's really putting these guys in position to use their skill set uh, to their advantage. Preston Fox had a nice spring. Where is, where is he in the fall? Does he continue? I think, I think uh, Preston Fox is really just a, a plug and play guy. You know, anytime somebody gets down, he's able to go in. He's one of the few guys in that room who knows all four spots. I, I trust him to go in there and back up all four positions. Um, as everybody in this room has probably seen, he, he has a great pair of hands. He never drops the ball. He's, he's came, you know, a long way as a route runner. He was always a good route runner, but now he's even better. He's learning the, the little things to get open. He's being more physical, and I think it's paying off for him, man. So I could see him definitely being a guy that could get in there and do some things at different positions. 
mentioned the need for Caden to stack strong performances together. How does he get to that point? Uh, for him, you know, me and him, you know, we talk every day pre-practice, and I just, I just tell him, man, this is this is the thought for today. Like this is the focal point for today. Like, hey, first day of practice, I just want you to play fast. You know, if you don't do anything else today, play fast. You know, and once he's stacked that day or checked that box, all right, next time I want you to play fast and play, use this technique, be good here, and he'll, he'll do it. Now he's stacking days. And for him, he's so talented, and I think things come easy to him sometimes. He makes the game harder than it needs to be. And, like, for him, it's really understanding, like, hey, I, I have all this ability, I have all this talent, but I can't use everything I know on every single route. Sometimes it takes this, sometimes it takes that. And now he's starting to understand, like, hey, I can do this here. I can do that there. And now I'm seeing the wheels turn. He's asking questions in meetings that he wouldn't necessarily have asked in the spring. He's playing faster. Uh, he's catching the ball well, especially the past couple of days. And I, I just, man, I, I really think if he just keeps stacking up the way he's doing, he's going to be phenomenal. Tony, you don't play for a few weeks, obviously. But mm -hmm. You mentioned sorting out a rotation. How many guys do you like right now if you were to play today? And how many do you need by the time pick comes around? Um, I think I think everybody's playing at a high level. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say there's anybody right now that I wouldn't feel comfortable putting out there. Of course, the older guys, the, uh, you know, Sam Bryce are going to be out there. KP, he's going to be out there. Uh, Jeremiah and Cortez, as they continue to develop, I think they're going to find their roles. P. Fox is a guy that could be out there. Reese, I haven't said much about Reese, but Reese is having a phenomenal camp. He's one of those guys who've been stacking up days, repeatedly playing fast. He's a uh, Repeatedly been one of the highest GPS uh, guys in terms of speed. So I think he's playing really good as well. So Reese is definitely going to be one of those guys that's going to see a lot of early action. Jarrell Williams, where is he? Jarrell Williams is doing, uh, he's doing well. Obviously, he's a, he's a young player. He's still developing. He's still learning. Uh, but he has, he has the ability to be a combo guy, too, when I say play outside and inside. Um, he's learning. He's a smart kid. Biggest thing is just, He's got to he'd be a little bit more physical and do some things, but he's he's learning, understanding. He's doing a really good job. Coach, you mentioned the same James' confidence. How much has that grown since the spring? To me, it's, to me, it's night and day. Like he was all he was always confident, but right now he's confident and he knows. And that's kind of the thing, right? Guys who are confident, but they don't know what they're doing. It's not the same. But when you you know what you're doing and you're being confident, obviously with a new offensive coordinator, a new wide receiver coach, a new playbook, there are going to be some things he had to learn. But he's done a phenomenal job learning it, and now he's playing with confidence. He's he's using the techniques of what I think he should do, and we're seeing things the same way. And so now, you know, he's really playing at a high level. Tony, you were a receiver who played in the NFL, mm -hmm. and everything was in your control. I mean, as far as doing it, how big was that page to turn from you making the plays to now all of a sudden other people making the plays you want them to play? Um, it's it's definitely different. I think. Um, with any with any position coaching the hardest part is like you know coaches obviously we know we know about the game we know this we know that but it's being able to communicate it and get it and package it to the way the players understand and so you know for me the biggest thing coming from a, from a from a player to a coach is like I know what to do but how can I tell you what I know how can I translate that and so it was really finding a way to to simplify what I know and give it to guys who are younger and don't have as much experience and get them to understand it and be able to, to use it. And so I think that was the biggest transition is just simplifying things, keeping it simple, having simple rules, teaching the fundamental basics and growing from there. And so I think, you know, once you kind of figure that out and being around, you know, spend a couple of years as a GA under some really good wide receiver coaches, they kind of teach you the little tricks and things they do. And I think once you kind of learn that part, it gets a lot easier. Give you some really good advice on how to get through to guys. I mean, I'm sure you have to spend some individual time thinking, how do I get through to this guy? How do I get through to that guy? Yeah, I mean, it's a, I, I can name a ton of people. Just time at East Carolina, just time at University of Louisville. I've, I've been fortunate enough to have a ton of, of coaches who I can call and ask questions to. And uh, I probably wouldn't be here today without them, you know. And so they, they've done a good job. And I've been able to call people. And, and like you said, it's about figuring out what works for each guy, right? Like, I can't coach Bryce the same way I coach Sam. I can't coach Sam the same way I coach KP. I'm not coaching him the same way I coach Reese. It's, it's finding everything. And like I tell the guys, I'm not going to coach everybody the same, but everybody's going to get coached fairly, right? Some guys I got to be harder on. I got to put my foot up their butt a little bit more. Some guys you just kind of say, hey, do this, and they do it. But it's, it's finding what works because at the end of the day, what we all want is for these guys to play at the highest level. And so my job is just to help them do that.
Tony, I think you said in the spring where you can use some of your architecture background to design a house. Did you do that? Did you just buy one off the the block, or, to, or are you putting one together for yourself? You talking about on the football field? You talking yeah, about no, real, no. Oh, just, real life? Yeah, oh, just real life and look, adjusting to Morgantown. Yeah, so we uh, we're in a, we're in a town home right now. We have a house finished up in the fall, so we're we're building one. So it should it should be fun, man. I've I've enjoyed going over there and seeing it getting built, and it's been good. Any parts of it yourself? No, no, those days behind me. I probably ruined something right now if I put <laughs> pencil to paper. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys.